Hi, this is David with eMiniTradingStrategies.com. In this live eMini video, we are looking just past the opening bell. We've already got a long NSC, I'm sorry, a short NSC that's happened before the bell, so there's nothing we can do at this point except uh, wait for our next trade. Could be an EET over here on our short term. Our long term is short. Everything's kind of pointing down. So because we've just opened up, I'd like to see some downward conviction before I take a pullback trade. So if we see some conviction, I'll look to make a pullback trade once Pro Indicator shows me the entry. Be somewhere around 98 and a quarter. And there it is. It's actually 98. So that looks like a great trade right there for four ticks. Let me get my order in. I'm going to go short at 10.98. We have cancel rules in effect that would cancel the pullback trade. You would see an X show up on Pro Indicator. This course is Pro Indicator version 2, which is not quite ready for release, but it's something that we'll be releasing in the future and that we're illustrating in our videos. But And of course, we have the rules that we teach you when and when not to cancel pullback trades and when to avoid certain trades. So right now we still like the short pullback trade that's 9775 short. You see we have an EET signal here. Would have been filled at 9750 with a stop loss here at 9650. You may have gotten a good fill on that. Maybe a good trade um, the long term is short. I would actually be avoiding this trade right now and take the pullback trade. On an earlier video we talked about subjectivity, discretion, which trade is the right trade to make. There's times that both of these trades are valid and you can take either one of them and both see winners. In fact, I think we had a video where they were both winners. But right now with my short term, if it's just going short, I would avoid the EET as it's a long trade. So that would be against the short term trend. So here is a uh, no subjectivity in this. The pullback trade is the right trade to make. That's what I teach my students. You may make the right trade and take a losing trade because we're going to all take losing trades. But if you make the right trade, win, lose, or draw, you made the right trade. That's what it's all about. If you make the wrong trade, you know, you kind of reinforce the wrong. You reinforce the negative. So it's important to make the right trade. And if you win, hey, great, you win. If you lose, you, you recover based on the recovery rules, and you go on from there. So we're now short at 1097.90, uh, at 1097.75. Early entry technique was, depending on fill price, a winner, right? I mean, good example. You may have been filled at 50, may have been filled at a quarter, and it already jumped up to your profit target. So here's an example of an EET that I would not take that is still a winner. Okay, so the rules that I teach will sometimes keep you from taking winning trades, but a lot of times they're going to keep you from taking losing trades, and that's what it's all about is avoiding the losing trades, okay, and taking the higher probability probability trades and deal with them win lose or draw right so we're short our stop loss is in place markets at a pretty high level 1099 hasn't been here in quite some time so uh, not a big support resistance guy but mm, kind of thinking there's going to be a little bit of resistance at those levels not to say it may not stop me out first but I like the pullback trade. Now, because I'm in a short pullback trade, we now have a long normal system entry. And if you're long the EET, you could have stayed in that longer. The short term that I use to keep me out of that EET is no longer in play. That rule is no longer in play. So if you didn't take the pullback, you could take the normal system entry. So with that said, what do I do? Well, I'm not going to reverse and take a a pullback and turn it into a normal system entry. I have to take the trade that I chose and let the trade cook, let the trade do its thing. Okay, I get that question a lot. Well, if I'm short and we get a long NSE, should I just take that? Well, no, because what if you get a short EET? Should you take that too? Uh, we took a very viable trade and we're going to stick with that trade. Now, if we were coming at a double NSE zone where no NSE zone, where you got that back coloring, sometimes you want to avoid the pullback because the next NSC is such a strong winner or probability of it being a strong winner that you would want to avoid the pullback and really take the EET. But that's not the case right now. So we're just going to let this trade cook, let it do its thing, and see if we can make our four tick target. 
pullback trades typically are just about four ticks or about what you're going to make when you you know are trade EETs depending on system rules you can take them for a lot more than four ticks sometimes six to eight to ten twelve ticks NSEs four to eight ticks but pullbacks really they're good for about four ticks sometimes even only three ticks like situation right now we've got a little swing low here at 96.75 it's going to have to come all the way back down here and maybe even break through for us to get filled sometimes a student may pull it up and just grab three ticks off the trade but I'm going to let this trade cook and go for the full four ticks So hopefully we'll move along here quickly. We limited on, on time on these videos, so hopefully we'll get this trade done with uh, in the next minute or so. Of course, we hope it's a winner. If it is, that would be my one and done. Quick question about one and dones. You know, guys say, well, four ticks on one and done, you're not really making a point profit after commissions. Yeah, that's true. You've got the option of going for five ticks or taking an extra trade for a tick. And if I make more than one trade, if I make two, three trades, if I take a couple losers, I really make sure I cover all my commissions. But commissions are a cost of doing business. So if I were trading, let's say, 10 contracts, and I'd made four ticks, and I'm up $500, but I paid 40 50 bucks in commissions, that's a business expense. That doesn't bother me. But if it bothers you and you want to go for an extra tick, there's nothing wrong with that. So coming down close to our price, not quite going anywhere, keeps hitting 1097, turning around here. We had a normal system entry that was valid that turned out to be a losing trade. We have a short NIC that we can't take because we're still in a pullback, but technically we're in the same direction as the NIC. So we'll see if we can get down here. We do have the bracket. We do have the dome set up to move our stop loss down to entry after four ticks is hit. So if we get a fill, if any action price action moves down to 96.75, the dome will automatically move my stop loss to 97.75. And then I'll either get filled with a profit or it'll bounce back up, stop me out, and probably just break even on a trade. But as of right now, stop loss is still where it is, six ticks. Sometimes it's just like watching paint dry when you day trade for a living. There's times it's just rock and roll and the markets move so quick. It seems by the time you get filled, you got filled on a profit and you're already done and you have a 30-second day. Then there's times something like this happens. It gets close to your profit, kind of goes against you, gets close to your profit, goes against you. That That's all part of the business. And it's really all about really enhances and shows that you've really got to stay with the rules. You've got to let the rules do what they're going to do. I'll get a student that will say, well, if you take a trade and it doesn't get to your target or your stop loss in a set amount of time, two minutes or five minutes, or, you know, because normally we're out within a minute, do you just close the trade out? And the answer is no. The reasons that I took this short trade are still exist, and my stop loss is in, and I still like the trade, so there's no reason for me to close the trade out early because it's not doing what I want it to do in the time frame that I want it to. The market moves on its own time frame, not on mine. So, Now, we do have a very low volume day, so we're not getting a lot of action. Good day for a one and done. Hopefully, we'll get it. If we lose on this trade, now you'll see we've got another NSC. Here's a unique thing here that you get to see real time. Um, we, we are now in no NSC zone. Okay, you see this back coloring. This is done by Pro Indicator version two. It back colors, but my rules teach you that as well. Okay, here's our target. Okay, we're filled. We've made our profit, 
and we're in no NSC zone, so we're now going to avoid NSCs. So we've made our daily profit for the day. If we get out of no NSC zone, I'll turn the video back on because when we come out of no NSC zone, the NSC that follows is a strong trade. So let's go ahead and stop the video, and I want to thank you for watching.